Okay, um, this way around now. Um, so essay number six. Um, so um, straightforward part A. Um, yeah, part B that um, is gonna yeah is gonna challenge people who don't know what structural adjustment, structural reform means. Yeah. So um, part A was explain using diagrams the main ways um, in which a developing economy could protect its industries against um, imports, goods, and services. Yeah. Um, and I think. Um, a lot of people use this as um, as an excuse to to draw a tariff diagram, um, which is which is fine, um, um, if if you get it right. Um, and again, remembering you know that there's yeah you know, there's no marks just for drawing a, a diagram. Yeah, so it's a, it's about explaining how the tariff diagram can um, can can actually um, can actually reduce imports. Yeah. Um, people would then tend to pick something else like quotas or subsidies. Um, so so if you'd revised your AS notes here, then then you're doing quite well. Um, I think that probably the most, you know, the reality in the modern world, though, is it's kind of non-tariff barriers. Yeah, so, so things are a bit more subtle. You know, things like regulations, restrictions, you know, um, you know, kind of, this, you know, this kind of, I think, I was, re <clears throat> I was reading something um, um, about Brexit, and it was saying that probably the biggest problem that, that the UK is going to have is, it's not tariffs and quotas, it's the fact that, a lot of other countries now, um, they have their goods accredited in advance, yeah. So, so basically, you know, um, it, it, Australia, for example, it can, yeah, you know, basically, it can put the EU kite mark on it because the EU has agreed that it has the testing, the, the testing um, procedures in place, yeah, to say that its goods are fit for the EU market, and. Yeah? Um, and the question, yeah, for example, yeah, will this be part? Presumably, this would be part of any sort of Brexit negotiations. But if it didn't, then we'd have a huge problem because then they'd have to be inspected every time they crossed the border. Blah 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 blah. And I think, yeah, we talked. I mean, we talked about a variety of things like, yeah, like Brazil nuts from Bolivia and so on. And I think those are probably the more interesting ones. So the way I do part A, I think, is I do tariffs. Yeah, I do the tariff diagram, explain it, showing that I understood why imports are reduced. Um, I'd, I'd probably do kind of subsidies to domestic producers because you can base it around the same around the same diagram. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. So if, if you do it that way, yeah, then if you say there's kind of here are here are the you know the yeah here's, here's your world supply which is assumed to come in at constant price. Yeah, that's the UK supply. You know, um, based on rising marginal costs or assuming some sort of diminishing returns. There's demand. So UK firms can compete up to Q1. Because marginal cost is below the world price. After that, you wouldn't buy it from the UK. Yeah, you bring it in from the from the world market. Yeah, so Q2, that's the that's the level of imports um, and within that market. And what a subsidy does effectively is it reduces the marginal cost of domestic firms. Yeah, so if we give yeah, if we give yeah, a subsidy on S, yeah, then marginal costs fall yeah, by the amount of uh, by the amount of the subsidy. Now there are more firms whose marginal costs are below the world price. So effectively, what happens is that the UK market share increases to Q star, and imports are now only that level there. Um, and some something like that, I think, is yeah, something like that. I think is is quite smart. Quotas. Um, you, there is a diagram for quotas. Yeah, that, whether it's worth the trouble, um, I'm not entirely sure. So I do tariffs. I probably do domestic subsidies. I talk about quotas, and then I'd end the section just by saying, yeah, in the modern world, it's non non tariff barriers are probably the key things like intellectual property and a lot of type of stuff. Yeah. Part B obviously is the um, is 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 the challenge, um, and I think the problem with so part B was um, to what extent is structural reform or free market policies the best way of encouraging economic growth in LEDCs? Um, I think the, the the problem with this is that people tended not to focus on the on, on the entirety of the of the title. Um, so obviously the point about structural reforms is they're supposed to be both internal and external. And weaker answers tended only to focus on the external side of things. Yeah, so in other words, they only focused on things like free trade. Whereas the very best answers looked at you know all of the key elements. Yeah, so yeah, so when when we're looking at structural reforms, yeah, we're looking at firstly um, external reforms, so free trade, sure, um, access for foreign multinationals, sure. Um, also, generally allowing the exchange rate to float, you know, which may well mean a, a reduction in the exchange rate. Um, and then internally, re reductions in the role of the state, so often cuts in cuts in government spending, privatisation, and deregulation. And 
really, once you understand that that's what structural adjustment involves, the essay at that stage is really straightforward because all you've got to do is to talk about the extent to which these are liable to be beneficial. And so, in principle, obviously, the IMF believes that each of these policies can be beneficial. We know that under most circumstances that it hasn't tended to work out that way. Um, and that's that's really that's really the structure of your answer. So you're saying, well, look, you know, in principle, we can liberalize trade. And in, in theory, this creates competition, creates um, productivity and efficiency, da, 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 da. Um, and therefore, in the long run, promotes growth. Yeah, but in reality, we know that in the case of countries like Jamaica and so on, that you know, it's just been a car crash, really. Um, same with privatization. In principle, it creates the profit motive, incentives, and so on to, to be efficient and so on. But we know that this has gone wrong you know, in both um, you know, underdeveloped, less economically developed countries like, you know, and like you know, uh, I think it was Bolivia, you know, where, you know, where the price of cooking gas went up by 60% or something. Um, there have been problems with water privatization as well. Um, we know that, you know that the Russian privatization you know, back in the 90s was badly botched. Um, so, yeah, so in reality, in principle, it can be a good thing, but in reality, yeah, often it doesn't work out. Cuts in government spending, obviously, in principle, it reduces the size of the, you know, the budget deficit, you know, prevents crowding out, therefore allows investment, blah, 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 blah. And in reality, of course, that's not necessarily going to be true because, well, it might be true, but, but the cuts in what, what's the government cut spending on? It's got to be health and education because that's all it's got. Um, so is that really going to promote long-term you know, economic growth? No, because da, 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 da. And a cut in exchange rate, in principle, blah, 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 creates export competitiveness, the price of exports falls and so on. But in reality, lots of these countries are import dependent. The increase in the price of imports may therefore just stuff them over. So, and then your conclusion is that, yeah, in principle, you know, I mean, a good conclusion is that in principle, these, these policies, you know, make sense, but they only really work in countries that already have some sort of, you know, some sort of underlying base in place. Therefore, they're more suitable probably for MEDCs or newly industrializing countries than they are for, you know, than they are for the, you know, the LEDCs that the, that the question is talking about. Yeah. Um, so again, um, fairly straightforward if you know your stuff. And I think that, that's the message, you know, um, is make sure, make sure you're revised. Um, I know it was difficult for these mocks, but um, that, that's got to be the key going forward.